We're now going to get a tiny bit mathy and talk about matrices and how they help us move our 2D game scene into the third dimension. Rather than discussing linear algebra, we're going to be treating matrix methods as a black box. We'll put a value in and get a value out. As long as you understand what matrices do, in this course, you don't have to understand how to do the math underneath. However, if you continue with computer graphics, and I hope you will, math becomes very important. And I'll list some math resources at the end of this part of the course. We work in a coordinate space that has X, Y, and Z axes. At the center of these axes is the origin. That's at position zero in all directions. Our up axis will be the Y axis, but some apps such as Blender use Z for the up axis. It doesn't matter as long as your app is consistent. Each vertex in a model has a position generally between minus one and one. Models do often have vertex positions outside of this range, but just for now we'll work between minus one and one. Matrices enable us to transform these vertices easily. Mathematically, a transformation is a function that translates or moves, rotates, or scales something. When you apply a transformation matrix to a vertex position, that vertex position will translate, rotate about the origin, and scale. This is what a transformation matrix looks like internally. For a 4x4 matrix, there are four columns and four rows. The matrix on the left, with the ones and zeros in this position, is called the identity matrix. If you multiply a vertex position by this matrix, the position remains the same. It's exactly the same as if you multiply five by one. The answer is five. Incidentally, the number one is an identity matrix too. It has one row and one column. If you fill out the matrix on the left with rotation or translation values, you can multiply it with a vertex position to change that vertex position. And that's what we'll be doing in the vertex function. Here's what's magic about matrices. You set up a matrix with a particular translation, rotation, and scale values. It might look like this matrix on the left, which will translate by 0.2 on the x-axis and rotate by 45 degrees on the z-axis. You can see that the code for setting up this matrix is quite simple. You can then multiply this matrix with a vertex position, and that vertex translates, rotates, and scales according to the matrix. This is the one thing that you need to understand about matrices for this course. To move a three-dimensional object, you apply a four by four transformation matrix to all the object's vertices and the object moves, rotates, and scales in three-dimensional space. Matrices truly are amazing, and if you don't understand them, I hope that you'll follow up this course with some linear algebra. Use the provided starter code for this video. The code is exactly the same from the previous section, but there's now a math library file containing the matrix methods. There's also a tree model, which we'll add to our scene shortly. Let's try out some matrix transformations. We'll set up a transform type so that we can move our model around. So create a new Swift file and call it transform. We import the SIMD library so that we can use the float3 type. We haven't had to do this before because SIMD is included in MetalKit. We want to create a matrix from the position, rotation and scale. So we'll create a computed property. This uses the math library methods to create the matrices and returns a matrix for the model. Remember that the order of matrix multiplication matters. You generally do the translation last. The order of the multiplication is right to left so that the scale and rotation matrices are multiplied first, and then the translation on top of that. In model, add the struct. We can send the trains matrix to the GPU in draw. So go to renderer.swift and locate draw in. I'm using a high index number here to keep it separate from the other indices we've used. In the vertex function in shaders.metal, 
Change the header to receive the matrix and calculate the final position of each vertex. Let's remove where we change the Y position of the vertices. We'll do that in Renderer. Build and run. And our train is in the original zero position. Currently the model matrix is the identity matrix. We can check this using the debugger. So let's change the train's position in renderers in it. So here I've moved the train down and to the right, rotated it along the z-axis and scaled it by a half. Build and run. The model's transform creates a matrix from the position, rotation and scale and the shader function multiplies each vertex by this matrix to get the new position. And that's how cool matrices are. Generally we have more than one model in a scene. So let's bring in a tree model. We'll add this model to renderer and reposition the train and position the tree to the left and behind it. As we don't have perspective yet, the tree won't look further away. To render the tree in draw, we'll create an array of models and wrap the rendering into a for loop. and build and run, and here's our multicolored scene.